Hey, and welcome back to another video. So I was initially not going to record this. This was just going to be a boring uh, battery and uh, display swap uh, that really uh, doesn't really have any content to it. But um, then I realized something. Um, now I bought a Apple Watch, an iCloud locked Apple Watch. Do um, it's this one, and it came with a good display. It was like 15 bucks or something. I'm gonna and I'm gonna put it into one of these. Uh, another series one which I got in this part slot you can go watch that video it's up there uh, it's an Apple watch part slot um, which is this one is not iCloud lock so I'm putting the display from this to that um, and I bought a new battery for it however I forgot to buy the uh, force touch gasket this piece of rubber that goes around the uh, goes under the display I was wondering can you reuse the force touch, force touch gasket from this? Is it possible to reuse a force touch gasket? Because uh, everywhere and every other guide says to um, replace it. But I'm going to try today to reuse it and uh, try to glue it, to remove it from here without damaging it and put it to the good one and then put the display back together and the battery and everything. So let's uh, go ahead and jump right in. But before we jump right in, don't forget to leave a like on this video as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button uh, to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord and Twitter and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. Okay, so let us first, now there is a film, I don't know if you can see that, there is a film of glue still on this force touch sensor. So first we're gonna have to clean it off without damaging the sensor. Um, um, what, what I think what I'm gonna do first is kind of use some rubbing alcohol on it. And uh, but I was wondering since the sensor is rubber, will it burn it? That's my biggest concern because the rubbing alcohol could start degrading the rubber. I mean, I could scratch it off like this, but I could also damage the sensor while doing this. Now I'll do this off camera because this is gonna take a long time, but you get the idea what I'm doing. Now, once I have that uh, layer of uh, glue off, there's gonna be another layer at the bottom. So I'll have to clean all of those once I've taken this thing out. So I'll do that and be right back. So I did manage to get between the layers as you can see there. So I can slowly move this up the, uh, the sensor like that. So I'm, I'm not damaging the sensor and I'm taking the glue off in one go. So that is good. So if I can do this without breaking the glue for the entire loop of the sensor, that's just gonna make everything much easy. I have to kind of keep some tension on the sensor. Now the sensor is quite fragile, but it's not that fragile. Like some people say you gotta be very careful with this thing. It's not that fragile, but it's still, you, you, if you pull it too much, it's gonna break. So yeah. Okay, so we have that out. Now the sensor has come loose and it's looking underneath. Um, there is definitely a plate of, uh, a uh, bunch of glue there as well. So let's try and get the uh, screw out here. Now I don't have a proper tri-point screwdriver that would fit in there. This is a very awkward position. I'm sorry for the, uh, the camera quality because I've zoomed in. I'm recording on an iPhone 11, which does not have uh, a telephoto lens, so it's only the uh, wide angle lens. So I wish I could use my iPhone 12 for this, but uh, I don't use my 12 for videos. Um, I will be using the 12 for videos in the future once I get the 14, because I'm not buying the 13. Um, but for now, it's just the iPhone 11. Um, I'll get this screw off camera and be right back. Okay, so that's out. And we can pull that out like that. And we have the force touch sensor now released. We can uh, slowly begin to lift it off the frame. Now this is usually usually just ripped off the frame because no one really reuses it. But the purpose for this video is to see if we can reuse this. So we gotta be careful. Now there's more glue underneath there. Um, this uh, 
the polished aluminum is not doing too well in terms of grips on my gloves because it floats around as you can see there. So we have the sensor. Um, the top is free of the glue. The bottom has more glue. So I'm gonna find a place to get my uh, tweezers in between. And uh, what I'll do is I'll do the same thing I did earlier. So I just gotta find a place to get the tweezers like that so i'll do i'll get i'll get a line started and then uh, we can rip the glue off so the glue at the bottom is not coming off like the glue at the top i can just scrape it off with my uh, glove like that it's just uh, flaking off uh it should be the same glue but i don't know what it's doing now the replacement glue when we put this back together i'm going to be using uh, b7000 uh, which is a bit too much I mean for an Apple Watch but uh, I'll be only replacing the battery on this thing once and uh, I won't be opening it ever again so uh, because B7000 is a bit hard to get uh, to basically uh, loosen but it does get loose for heat but the issue is we're using an OLED display and we don't want to screw up the OLED display with too much heat and B7000 needs a bit more heat than the stuff they've used here so um, that is just something I have to take into concern there. So for reapplication, I thought instead of going for B7000, uh, I'll go for this, which is E6000. E6000 is more, uh, rubbery and it's more, it's got more give. It's a rubber based ish glue. Uh, B7000 is like super glue. It turns solid. So now I can't really do this on camera because I got to be very precise with the glue. Um, so I'll have to do this off camera when it comes to gluing stuff. Uh, so I'll first glue this thing on and then we'll glue the display and be right back. Okay, so we have um, pasted it down. Um, I think I did a decent job. There's a bit of excess glue, but uh, that's no big deal. We can just uh, take it off the sides later. Um, now we're gonna install the battery um but before that we have to uh, actually do this um by putting the force touch sensor connector down there and this is sometimes a bit annoying to do let me it's kind of hard to do anything honestly with this camera in my with the, with the phone in my face while i'm recording this so okay so that's there and we can now screw it back in place where's the screw this is going to be a bit tricky so we'll be right back so now let's put the battery in and i'm not gonna paste it right away i gotta test to see if the full touch sensor does work um we can turn this thing on and the battery as i remember has some charge um it's a bit annoying to put back with again it's usually easy but uh the camera is in my face and I'm doing most of this through the viewfinder, well, the display. Um, and um, it kind of gets hard at times. Like, there's another way to put the battery, I guess. I can uh, fold it backwards like this. Okay, so we have uh, put the display back as well. I just want to save time. Let's uh, power this thing on. There we go. We'll see if the full start sensor works before gluing this thing in place. Now, I hate gluing these things because the display is in the way and uh, it kind of makes it hard to uh, get the glue around it without rubbing it everywhere. I thought of applying the glue to the display on itself, but then again, that's gonna make a mess as well. So we shall see. Uh, it's easier to just get those pre-made glue strips. However, they're not as water resistant as applying a thick layer of glue because um, those strips are just 3M strips. Some of them are not even legit 3M, so yeah. Okay, so we have the watch here and I already set it up a different time, uh, probably a few months ago. Uh, so we don't have to set it up already. So now I can show you uh, the difference between the, because uh, I already tested it, the full touch works. So I can show you the normal touch. You press and hold, it starts wiggling to reorganize. If you full touch it, let me do that again. I actually have to paste it down properly. So I have to apply extra pressure, hold up. 
way. Force touch it. There you go. So the sensor is working. Uh, it is not working ideal because uh, I haven't pasted it down, but um, it will work once um, once I've glued it down. So that is a success. Um, let me go ahead and turn this off because it's uh, freaking out. But as you can see, the full touch does work. There you go. That is the full touch because if you normally hold it like that, it just starts wiggling. So if you full touch it, it works. Anyway, let's go ahead and put this thing back together. I'm gonna glue it off camera because that's gonna take a while and then we'll uh, see what happens. So I have the watch here again and uh, the glue is done drying and I can now show you the force touch sensor in action again uh, since it's uh, done drying and it's pasted better. So when I just press it like that without any pressure, I just hold it over the screen, nothing happens, but when you add pressure, that happens. So uh, all the force touch functions are working. Let me show you again, normal hold. It just starts wiggling for rearrangement and you press it you get the list view versus grid view. So the false touch sensor on an Apple Watch uh, can definitely be reused. Uh, it just takes more time and uh, it takes uh, a bit more patience uh, when you're taking the old blue off the Apple Watch uh, off the sensor. So uh, that's obviously something that some shops may wanna do, some shops may not wanna do, but I'll definitely be doing that from now on. Um, the glue situation um, on this watch, uh, it has pasted, but as you can see, this hole kind of dug out by the previous guy who opened this watch. A really unprofessional job there, honestly. Uh, he's basically damaged the frame, as you can see there. He's dug it out. So this watch is never going to be waterproof. I don't know if, it, it'll, if it'll even be moderately splash resistant with that hole there so I definitely cannot get this uh, even mildly wet but I can use it for its basic functions. Anyway this was just a quick video showing you uh, that it's possible to swap the full touch sensor on some Apple watches. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you've done this yourself and if you're a repair person as well. Uh, as usual thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button down below. Also don't forget to check out my social media down in the description below. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.